Hello, my name is Maya Rebersky. And I'm Maya Sučević Miklin. Welcome to our virtual workshop called After the Earthquake Damages on Wooden Objects and First Steps of Preservation. This workshop will present simulations of different types of damages caused by an earthquake on wooden objects and general measures of preservation to protect the objects depending on the type of damage and condition of the object. Wooden objects in museums, churches, historical buildings come in a lot of forms. From functional objects such as furniture to religious objects such as icons and altars with sculptures and joined objects that are made of wood and one or more than one type of material such as frames, panel paintings, musical instruments. Types of damages depend not just on the intensity of the earthquake and the location, position of the object during the impact but also on the object's technological layers and condition. In this workshop, we are going to cover damages on several most common wooden objects with different technological layers, presenting real and mock-up examples. Common damage types caused by the earthquake are primarily mechanical damages. Mechanical damages occur on the upper layers, but if the impact is strong, wooden structure could be affected. Damages are caused by the fall itself or by the interior materials falling on the object. The secondary damage could occur after the earthquake if the conditions are somehow changed, like microclimate changes depending on the conditions and weather outside, or in the worst case, a fire due to broken electrical and gas lines. And tertiary damages that could unfortunately be caused by people with mistreated handling. The first damage mock-up that you're going to see is made of plain wood that represents the surface of wooden sculptures, parts of sculptures or panel paintings that are exposed to the wooden layer or some ethnographic objects. Mechanical damage on wood is loss of material due to a mechanical action that is contact or impact between two objects. In situations like earthquake, damages vary from minor, moderate to major, depending on many factors from earthquake's magnitude scale to object's location, for example, the height of the stand, the way the object is mounted, to the type of the object. For example, here we can see a mock-up of wood that has minor damages caused by pieces of mortar, bricks falling on an object like abrasions, scratches, to moderate such as mechanical cracks, dents, split, checks. Major damages could occur when the object is in poor condition to begin with. Wood as is susceptible to insect attack or it is or it was once infested with wood more, results in weakened wooden structure that could easily break. These crushed parts can become irretrievable. When the wood collapses, upper layers, if present, usually become irretrievable too. Wooden objects could be combined with other materials. For example, this canvas stretcher that is infested with woodworm, it has lost its strength and it could collapse during impact and at the same time damage the painting. Wooden objects, like furniture, have a protecting coating that could easily be scratched and crackled around the impact area. Other types of damages could occur if conditions in the interior change. For example, if during the earthquake the roof collapses, the temperature and relative humidity will change. It will rise or fall depending on the weather outside. The wood, if exposed to the high humidity due to precipitation, could expand and could form cracks in the upper layers. The water could soak the coated wood and also produce stains.
Wider range of damages that water causes, rain for example, happens on a wooden object that has a gesso layer on top. Gesso is traditional priming, also called a preparatory layer, used on a wood or a canvas support. It consists of binder and filling, usually animal size, and chalk or gypsum. These layers, if exposed to a larger amount of water for a longer time, become soft and in time could get washed down. This especially happens when gesso is in poor condition, like this one. The surface is cracked, the pieces could, during the impact, more easily fall and the water could access inside faster. The durability of gesso under just mechanical impact that often occurs during the earthquake, as you can see, is not quite high. Moderate damages like cracks, dents, splits and major losses could happen. Damaged areas could show previous restoration reconstructions of the preparatory layer Wooden objects that have primed layers are mostly seen on sculptures that imitate white marble and of course polychrome and gilded objects where gesso is used as a surface on which the paint and gold or silver leaves are applied. Polychrome wooden objects that can be found in churches, museums and historical buildings when mechanically damaged, could have the same damages as the primed objects, but with one more layer that can be damaged, the paint layer. The more layers there is, the more different damages could occur, and in all were just one upper layer. For example, here you can see an abrasion in the paint layer, here in both paint and preparatory layer, and you can see that the abrasion could easily be turned into a loss. Pieces of mortar falling on the objects cause not only mechanical damages due to impact but also surface dirt that could get into the cracks and if combined with precipitation dirt deposits are created. Damages caused by water will depend on the water amount and the strength of the water impact, but also on the durability of the object and the technological layer. For example, continuous water exposure could remove entire upper layers to the wooden ground. In some cases, original paint can be resistant to a small amount of water, for example, casein tempera. Then again, Restoration reconstructions of paint layer, the retouches that are made in thin layers with materials that are reversible, can be removed quicker than some originals, as you can see now. Objects that definitely react to water and mechanical impacts are gilded wooden objects such as sculpture, frames, chandeliers, clocks. Gold and silver on wooden support are actually very thin sheets of metal that are applied on a previously prepared surface. So here you can see plain wood, preparatory layer applied on plain wood, first layer of bowl, this is the yellow bowl, second layer of bowl, this is the red one, 
and thin sheets of golden leaves applied and polished. This kind of gilding is very sensitive to water as you can see now. Mechanical damages that occur on gilded objects again include damages on more than one layer since the gilded leaves are so thin. You can see here cracks, losses. Some gilded objects, like frames, are made of combined material as you can see on this cross section. This golden frame is made from different materials and several parts that react differently to the impact. The wooden objects that are composed of several parts, especially if the parts are protruding in space, could be affected with major damages. These parts, if detached, could be easily lost. For example, here are parts of the altar that were separated. You can see a little sculpture of Jesus that has lost his arms. In worst case, major and extreme damages to all types of wooden objects could occur due to fire that is one of the common side effects of earthquakes, as you can see here. So what are the first steps of preservation on damaged wooden objects after the earthquake? Of course you have to wear protective equipment, such as helmet, protective goggles, protective mask, various kinds of protective gloves, and protective clothes and footwear. Given the situation with COVID, it is also important to follow the measures of the National Civil Protection Headquarters. To carry out the evacuation successfully, evacuation plan has to be developed. The plan includes floor plans of the whole building with marked places that are not safe and with the location of the artworks that will be evacuated. If the building is not entirely safe, a list of artwork with priority rescue should be made because initially it will not be impossible to save everything. When creating the list some general criteria are the value of the object that can be historical, artistic, educational or a rarity of an individual item, but especially for wooden objects, criteria like sensitivity to microclimate changes that could increase damage. One must also bear in mind that not all wooden objects are accessible and easy to handle. Some smaller wooden objects are easier to lift or reach without endangering human life. But large and heavy objects like furniture and altars are difficult to evacuate quickly and to be handled alone, so more volunteers are necessary. It is said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and in this case of emergency evacuation it is totally applicable. Taking photos is the easiest type of documentation that could be carried out. You only need camera or camera on your mobile phone. Photographs give insight into the current state of the building, rooms, artifacts and the damages with wide and close-up shots.
If the static of the building is good, documenting the state could include writing type of documentation, such as condition reports. The condition report is a fill-in report that makes documenting the condition of the damaged object much easier. You will only need a pen, some firm cardboard and possibly a flashlight because there may be no electricity in the building. The condition report indicates the approximate type and extent of damage to the material and what can be saved. Assess which items are severely damaged and which are under threat of additional damage if left unattended. Approximately determines the number of damages item and their material. Documentation and recordings on the condition and actions in the site are of great importance to building constructors, art historians, conservator restorers and Ministry of Culture. After documenting the site and objects, and before packaging the objects, there are some measures that must be taken into account, for example, in what condition is the object and how can it be handled. As you can see here, if there are dry dust and debris from mortar on the object, it must be dusted with soft brushes. One has to be careful to recognize the pieces of primed or polychrome wood that are detached because they could be easily mistaken for plaster. If there are pieces of glass, protective goggles and gloves are necessary. If there is a thick layer of moist debris, some wooden objects could be cleaned with cotton cloth. But this surface cleaning must be done with caution and it depends on the type of dirt and the type and stability of the surface of that wooden object. Because it could be additionally damaged if treated unprofessionally. We will demonstrate it now. Here the golden leaves react to water and the damage is increased with rubbing cotton cloth. If the evacuation is not urgent, preventive conservation can also be done. Preventive consolidation of severely damaged layers that could be lost is done with adhesives and Japanese paper. Adhesives come in a liquid form, they have to be diluted, require a brush for applying so this way is not the most practical when on the site. So adhesives in form of a spray are more efficient as you will see now. It is better to package an object on the spot, but if that is not possible, one must determine a safe area for packaging. When packaging, there are some steps that had to be followed. The protective layer next to the object should be soft acid-free paper or polyester foil, and then an airfoil. If this is not possible, airfoil is sufficient, but do not forget that in this case you will have to properly protect the item after they are evacuated. And of course, tape for fastening objects after wrapping, wide adhesive tape for gluing boxes or ropes 
could be used. In a chaotic situation like this, there is a possibility of displacing small elements or pieces so they are safer if they are placed in little plastic bags such as this one. For medium sized objects, plastic and cardboard boxes of different sizes could be used. One will also need materials and supplies like waterproof markers, scissors, scalpels and so on. If the object has to be disconnected from its stand, hardware supplies like pliers, screwdrivers, leathers, flashlights will be needed. So do not forget to do the list of salvage supplies. If the situation allows, the process of packaging will also include tagging the objects with cards or self-adhesive stickers. These cards go on the object if it is possible. And the labels are put on the package. And polyethylene and polyester foam or air foil, even textile could be used to separate objects in the box. Be careful not to overfill the box. Boxes must be sealed and marked. Be careful not to damage objects any further when handling them. Do not hold objects by the handles or protruding elements and always hold one hand under the object and hold it with the other. When you pack items, heavier objects and boxes should be put on the bottom and lighter and more sensitive on the top. Isolate damaged objects and objects contaminated with woodworm. Establish a clear path of movement without obstacles and do not carry too much at once. Determine how many hands you will need to lift and carry large and heavy objects and how many vehicles you will need to transport the artworks. The artworks should be moved to the less endangered part of the building or, if this is not possible, safe location should be arranged. The new location must have conditions that are optimal for wooden objects. That includes microclimate stability of relative humidity and temperature. For example, relative humidity has to be 40 to 55 percent and temperature from 18 to 22 Celsius. Available electricity for humidifiers and dehumidifiers to obtain the stability. The location must be without mold and pests and must be protected from burglary and vandalism. Exit and entry lists to control the relocation of the object should be prepared so that they do not get misplaced. The new location should be documented and regularly monitored. Thank, Thank you for, for watching us. us. We hope that you learned something new. 
For more information about the evacuation of the artwork after the earthquake, you can visit the following sites.